What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to Q Season 3, Episode 7. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos, and you can find all those playlists linked in the description box. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. I recently announced that I'm now looking for a video editor and graphic designer who can help me edit my videos and make thumbnails for this YouTube channel. I'm at a point in my business where I need to focus on creating more content and starting new projects like my second YouTube channel about professional volleyball and my 12-month jump training program. I'm looking for someone who has experience with advanced editing software like Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro, is familiar with the Elevate Yourself brand and style of videos, understands volleyball, is easy to work with, and willing to learn and collaborate together. If you're interested in this position, please email me your resume with video samples and your rates to the email address listed below in the description box. This comment cracked me up. Of course, I'm sure you guys know that I was referring to when you're playing for a long time that it's important to sit during timeouts. One thing I've actually been trying to teach my volleyball team is learning how to stay ahead of fatigue. A lot of times when we're fatigued, it's already too late to do anything about it and it's gonna to take too long to recover if you're trying to hydrate when you're thirsty. So during volleyball practices or games, it's important to hydrate even when you don't feel thirsty, because by the time you do feel thirsty, it's already too late. And also to sit down if you were on the court, because you don't want to wait until the fourth or fifth set to actually sit down. You want to actively rest your legs, even when you're working out at the gym. Don't be afraid to sit down. It's not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of intelligence and proper planning. I'm glad you guys enjoy some of the stories that I like to share. And I think that's what makes making these reaction videos so fun is because I relate so much to many of these experiences and I see a lot of them as a volleyball coach. And stories are just one of the oldest pastimes and to share stories is to share the human experience. There are very few moments where I felt goosebumps uh, during this anime and when that super trucker fan yelled, that gave me goosebumps. Just his will to want to push Karasuno forward and to get them out of the rut and to supercharge him just for a moment. That's a hardcore fan. You'll notice that I have my furry little friend here. I got a new pop filter because I've been listening to my reaction videos lately and I noticed that the consonant sounds are still a little bit harsh. So I'm hoping with a little bit poofier filter, it can absorb some of those sounds and make it a little bit of a smoother listening experience for you guys. I also forgot to announce that I recently bought this new $330 chair and it's super comfortable. I did a lot of research. It has a nice headrest, armrest, recline a little bit, but not too much. But more importantly, it supports my body because I spend so much time at the computer creating content, answering emails, running my business, and so on. And I want to give another shout out to all my Patreon members that are supporting Elevate Yourself financially to make ongoing purchases like this pop filter and the chair to continue making more content for you guys. So if you're interested in directly supporting Elevate Yourself financially, you can join our Patreon where you also receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, monthly podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high Q party started. We're starting off with some of that intense house trance music with that tip. Let me know if the sound actually is better with this new furry cat I got on the microphone. Nice cover. Nice cover. He's so excited to play one more set. Obsession. Let's see 
who is obsessed in this episode. <laughs> Interesting, we finally get to see some more insight from the Shiro Toizawa coach. Final set. Final set. Ooh. Darwin Suga, I think we did see that coming because Kageyama's been getting tired. <laughs> Man, they're so good at like capturing the feel of anxiety through his eyes. Mm, my body's warmed up, but my hands are cold. Is that Hinata in front of him? Oh no. <laughs> she went to go touch somebody. <laughs> wow, this is a big deal. <laughs> wow, for Shimizu to go out of her way to hold someone's hand. That's a big deal, that. Now you know that Suga's ready. He's been blessed with the angel's hands. Yeah, this whole time I thought these were random girls, but I've realized that they're actually they're girls from the Karasuno team. There's the K-pop crew. Mr. Refreshing. I think it would be cool if they keep going back to K-pop and to get his analysis as a way to educate the audience. Oh, I love it. Asahi saying, just said it to me. Man, he's come so far to not wanting to hit, play ball ball and to now wanting to be the ace. First one off the net. Wow, that's a good pass. Alright. First one's a kill. What's funny about this scene is you see the middle blocker has a little bit of a facial expression but even when Ushijima is blocking he has no facial expression he looks like a robot he kind of is I wanted to pause this here because this is a very bad blocking lineup the reason why Asahi got such an easy clean kill in the scene is Ushijima is poorly lined up usually you want to have the hitting shoulder lined up in the center of your chest so I always teach my post blockers which are the blockers on the outside it's not the middle blocker I always teach the post blockers to try to grab the hitting shoulder so Ushijima should be a little bit more to his left which is our right so that Asahi's hitting arm is directly in the center of Ushijima's body but he's posting way too wide so he's actually letting the hitter get inside of him and then getting an easy code there. So just a, something to keep in mind for the blockers there. How should you line up? You should always line it with your feet and shoulders in front of the opponent's hitting shoulder. That's right, the fifth set goes to 15 points. I was afraid they're gonna do something different in Japan, like go to 25 points in the fifth set. <laughs> Sometimes you say things on the outside, even if you feel something different on the inside. And Ushijima bringing the heat. Oh, I love it. Suki's getting frustrated. Nice pass from Daichi. Oh, soft block from Tendo. Let's see what Tendo's instincts show. Oh no, he read him so easily. Oh, lucky tool out. <laughs> so true. This is so true, especially in high school. When setters freak out, 
they set the safe set, which is either always to the outside hitter because that's the easiest one to set or the person who is closest to you. We're actually working through some of these things with our current setters at Monroe Catholic High School. Very talented. One is super fast. The other one has super strong hands. But they've never been challenged to make good setting decisions. I know that seems kind of obvious, obvious, but I think most setters, especially in high school, are just expected to just set who's going to get a kill. And the strategy is a lot more complex than that. You have to have a 5-point strategy, a 10-point strategy, and then your strategy changes during the last 7 to 8 points. A sign of a good setter is when they're not afraid to set the same person twice, specifically if they're not a left side hitter. Let's say if you're not afraid to set the middle twice or to go to the middle and the right side because it shows that they're trying to involve other hitters, but also they're not just choosing the easy set and bailing out all the time. And our setter, Allison, did such an amazing job during our last match on, what is it, today's Saturday. Yeah, our last match on Thursday. In the last two points of a, of a set, so I think the score was probably pretty close. It was like 23 to 22. We're up by one, but the other team, John F. Kennedy, was playing really well. They're super scrappy, great defense. And our setter set the outside, who's one of our better hitters, but sometimes she tends to get fatigued or... You know, when you set someone a lot, the other team learns how to dig them and how to defend against them. So then she got dug, and then we earned a free ball. Then we set the backside, and she tipped the ball and then got dug. And then she went right to the middle, and our middle got the kill. And we did that two times in a row where we just spread out the offense and try to make it more difficult for the opponent to read, and, and it worked. so proud of her because she went from the safe setter like just freaking out and setting who's closest to her or just going outside 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 to confidently to sorry my i got i still got really bad allergies for some reason and it's almost winter so my throat is a little a little itchy so having the confidence to set somebody else that you think can get the job done is a huge huge improvement in just two months so allison i don't know if you're watching these re reaction videos but good job good improvement and you played so well on thursday i'm proud of you i want to break your heart in two i think zuka is going to rise to the occasion he was called out i saw him with the serve i know he's got that same sliding off center pass. Good cover from Suga. Oh, the decision making of Suga. Oh, I love it. He called Setter out and screamed for Nishinoya to take control. Synchronized attack from Nishinoya. Wow. Oh, that's right. They worked on this from Nishinoya setting a quick back row attack. Oh, it's Tetsuga. Wow. What the heck? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, their reactions are so funny. That's what they were working on? That's pretty ballsy. 
俺の武器は堅実さでも俺にも新しいことができる I love that realization Suga screaming for Nishinoya was almost as powerful as Asahi screaming Suga Oh, our first female coach. I love it. <laughs> That's right. It's hard for young kids to do things that are not good for them. Oh, the Tendo backstory. Let's see if that affects him, that comment. <laughs> oh, he was a lonely kid. The horror. He was a different kid, but there's nothing weird about him. wonder why he was such a lonely guy and why people didn't want to hang out with him. I would hang out with him. Oh, more flashbacks. I love it. Did you guys catch that? Ushijima is eating chops, using chopsticks with his left hand. I know he's a left-handed hitter, but it's very easy to miss that when you're animating. Especially when you're, everyone you're animating is going to be right-handed. Oh, I just realized he's having a, a normal conversation with Ushijima. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is probably a flashback when he would just met him. Just, he's kind of like Hinata. Just this raw innocence. That must be Ushijima left handed drawing. Poor guy. Mm. Interesting. He took on this wife's last name. Mm. Maybe that's why Ushijima is so emotionally removed. Didn't really build any bonds with his parents. And always had to be on his own. Mm. Shirojozawa's... <laughs> Ushijima is actually opening up a lot. I wish I had a dad to pepper with me. That's a sign of a good hitter when their job is to try to make the setter look good. No matter what type of set, you gotta make it seem like give me anything and I will do something with it. That instills so much confidence in your setters. Yeah, I would much rather be known as a hitter that can hit anything than a hitter that can hit the crap out of the ball. Yeah, I feel sad for Ushijima. I didn't know his backstory was like that. Lonely guy. There's a lot of lonely people in this in this anime. Oh, that's right, he can hit, but he hasn't hit off of a libero set, which is a different angle, a different rhythm. Simple words, take it back, take the lead back. 
Yeah, this is the only way you can beat a bigger, more physical team is with speed and deception and attack variety. <laughs> Ooh, this is the first time you see a change in facial expression from Ushijima. Man, Tendo is very perceptive. Something that new is scary to you, right? And the funny thing is we have a, the horror character talking about scary things. It's funny. Oh, lucky dribble play. Wow, they're up four to one. Okay, they have their opposite pass. Not the ideal position, but of course we got triple block on Ushijima. Yeah, right over the block. I love how they go slow mo to just the crush right away. Oh, maybe they didn't want him to use his left hand. I was a little confused about the conversation between the dad and those two women. I'm assuming it's his wife and the, the mom. Maybe they come from a well-known family and they have really high expectations. Uh, or maybe I just didn't read that well. But yeah, maybe the, that conversation had to deal with Ushijima using his left hand and his hand, dad was holding his left hand saying... It's okay to be different because his left hand will be his strength. And it is his strength as a left-handed hitter being a, a very effective right-side hitter. So correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misinterpreting that scene. I know in a lot of ancient cultures, even in America, because using the left hand is considered the devil, especially for very conservative religious circles. Look at that power, that follow through. I love it. They're going to encourage each other right away. Great serving form. Ooh, Daichi gets the recovery out of system. Can they get a swing? Now the force has set a tough play. Free ball. Oh, wow. Tendo setting. Oh, no. Oh, Nishinoya coming out of the shadows. Man, he saw him. Look at that cut. Great technique demonstrated by Ushijima, of course. So he sees the block. He sees Tanaka blocking the line. And then he sees Nishinoya about to dig his straight on. So Ushijima contacts on the top left corner and follows through away from his body. And that's exactly how you hit that deep angle. So if you want to hit into the angle to your left, you contact on the top right corner and follow through towards the opposite corner. If you want to hit to your right as a left-handed hitter, you contact in the top left corner and follow through towards the bottom right corner. Great technique demonstration by Ushijima here. How's a 3-3 already? Yeah, great vision. Strong guys and interesting guys gather in a strong environment. Strong guys, weird guys, and new guys. That's a team right there. You get a, a hodgepodge of different personalities and you make it work. Yeah, little Ushijima is pretty cute. Quoting Tendo. <laughs> this is so cool to see Ushijima's different side other than just that straight robot. Uh, this is Ushijima's time. All right, I think Shiro Toyozawa is going to win because... Oh, they called it in. 
Probably sometimes it's just too fast for people to see and it looks in even if it's not. I predict that Shiro Toizawa is going to win because they just had his backstory and we all feel pretty sorry for Ushijima so he has to win again. Oh the Chester. Sometimes if you just get behind the ball good things happen. Chance ball dude. Oh saying to Ushijima again. That's right from the middle this time. Suki. Oh, Suki read that one. But could not get the ball up. <laughs> yes, that's a compliment. You know who else is getting into it? Suki. Read yeah, he just reads really well, has good intuition, and he works hard. He's touching everything, that's frustrating. That can get to someone's head when you keep touching their spikes, even if it's not a clean kill. Dribbler, let's see who gets this one. Of course Daichi does with this great defense. Oh, and he touches again. I love his commitment. This is a great middle blocker here. Man, he just closes everything. <laughs> Let me watch that scene again. Why was he referencing Aune? <laughs> just like Aone. I hope Suki heard that. Maybe he'd be annoyed and play even harder. The impact that a good middle can have. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I like Tendo. He's so right. Oh, Tendo. Let's see if he converts. Is he gonna get it? He read that play. He didn't fall for Tendo's decoy and solely focused on Ushijima. Oh, he closed the block, but he couldn't make that last hand drop move. Oh. Ushijima says, sorry. To me, this speaks volumes about Ushijima's character. He's been near perfect this entire match. And the one ball that he hits out by a few millimeters, he immediately apologizes to the setter. Essentially saying, you gave me a great set, I hit that ball out, that's my fault. As the main hitter on the team, he could even easily have a superstar mentality and blame the setter and say, you gotta set me more inside, or you gotta get it higher, even though it, it was probably his fault that he just turned it a little too much. but. Man, I, I like Ushijima. I already liked him in the beginning because he's just a, a straightforward guy and he's a great volleyball player. And he seems to be a really good teammate. But he also has a level of humility and truth about him, which I really appreciate. Now let's go to Tsuki blocking here. Let's go back to this scene. When I just replayed that, I noticed that it actually hit off of Zuki's block, and that's why it went out. So the ref should have called a touch. Let's see if this is the correct scene. It is. So he hit it off of Zuki's hand, but he called it out. But do they give the point to Karasuno? Does anybody else notice this? Okay, the ref called a touch. That's right, I was like, that's, it's rare for a ref at this level to miss something like that. But he's forcing Ushijima to really play on the edge of his ability. Uh oh. This happens to a lot of middle blockers. Just the, the jam of the fingers are constantly 
This is the weakest part of our hand. Oh no, it's red. Oh, it got split. I've only known two people for that to happen. The little web here that gets split open. I would just tape that up and keep playing. Wow. Ushijima just came and scored like five or six points. Let's see what. Yeah, he's been a huge reason why they are starting. Even though they haven't scored. <laughs> Even though they haven't scored, and Ushijima has just been on this incredible run. They've been fighting so well and, and slowing them down. Like they're, they're right there. So you feel the momentum on Kadasuna's side, actually. Hey, every, there's always a lookalike from every team. Here's the the Tanaka lookalike. Oh, what a good older brother. Hey, maybe that rest is gonna get him back in the game, jump a little higher, move a little faster. <laughs> I love that Suki is, is trying to hide it. This just shows even more how much he cares about winning. Great encouraging words from his brother. Yeah, even when you're not on the court, you just have to believe. Charge up, Daichi. Sakai! That needs to be a t shirt. Oh, the crush from Ushijima. Perfect pass. Tenda with a soft block with the new middle. I'm sorry, Pride Suga sets him right away. Ooh, Nishinoya. Is he gonna set Suga again? No. Is he gonna dump it? Is the libero gonna dump it? If he does, that'd be nuts. As all he contacts it below the plane of the net. Oh, he calls for it again. Who's this little guy? Oh, little Tendo. Poor little guy. Oh, Tendo just shuts him down at Suga's most confident moment. Damn, that was a momentum killer right there. <laughs> it was just a hunch. Some people are just born with those instincts. This reminds me of one of our players at Moroa Catholic. Her name is Yumiko, and she's a very, very gifted athlete. She jumps well, she moves fast, she just has these raw instincts. And just talking to her, I don't know if she was taught a lot of system, like systematic play in terms of how to read, how to structure your defense, where to move, footwork, technique, um, even though she's been playing club for a while. And so this year, she's having to absorb a lot of information. And we recently moved her from left side to right side because her shoulder's been bothering her. So I thought at least we can allow her to contribute through blocking and defense and maybe take a few fewer swings throughout the game. And we put her on right side on Thursday and she was blocking lights out. She was already a good blocker from the left side. But in high school, most of the sets are going to go to the left side. So she wasn't getting a lot of blocking opportunities. And man, on the right side... 
she just naturally knew where to line up. She's probably reading the setter without knowing it. And she is able to fully commit block on almost everything. And very rarely do I have to tell her where to line up. And that's one thing I learned as a coach is that some people are just born with natural instincts and you don't want to coach that out of them. If they're already doing the right things, it actually takes a lot of humility from a coach to not say anything. Because as a coach, you want to take credit for everything and say, oh, I showed her how to do that. But in terms of Yumiko's block instincts, I didn't teach her that. And my job as a coach is to not mess up those instincts. I can help her refine it with a little bit of blocking hand positionings and eventually teaching her how to like drop block and split block and how to dive block. But that's only like 5% of it. She's already 90% there and, and she got tons of stuff blocks and it was really great to see. Maybe I'll show you some clips one of these days because <laughs> I'm just short on time. I would love to, actually, maybe I can incorporate some clips in here of her blocking. I think that would be fun to add to show just how raw she is and how well she lines up. Scary clown music. I love that horror theme. Wow, it's already over. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 7. I did not expect to learn such an in-depth backstory behind Ushijima and let alone Tendo. I thought it would be maybe one or two new people, but they really dove deep into Shiro Toizawa's team. And I love these backstories because it just creates so much more empathy towards these characters and another reason why Haikyuu has been so successful is because each backstory is so different and each person in terms of like the main characters like Hinata, Tanaka, Asahi, um, Tendo, right, those guys, Bokuto, all the main characters have such different personalities and then you also get to see the backstory as to why they are the way they are and that just allows everyone to relate to at least one character in Haikyuu. We still haven't seen Yamaguchi a lot. Um, I really hope he does get a chance to come into this game and make an impact. And I wonder if Kageyama is going to come in to actually hit because they've been struggling on offense. And Tsuga got blocked. Tanaka's been struggling to get a kill. Maybe they just need a fresh arm in there. But this was also another intense episode that I lost track of time. Can't wait to see the result of the fifth set. I'm afraid to watch them lose. And unfortunately, I think that's going to happen. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. We'll see you in the next one.